Quick demo of this video tutorial. This is a step by step tutorial on how to create master details code operations, insert, update, and delete with the help of C Sharp Data Grid View and SQL Server. In this tutorial, we will create an application like this. In order to insert a new record, you can do this. We can select an image for this employee using this browse button here. Then I will select this image. In order to add previous company details, you can use this details data grid view here. Company name will be ABC, then position will be software developer, then year of experience will be 3. In order to add or insert this employee, you can click on this save button here. Inside this second tab employee register, we have listed all the employees that we have inserted into our database. In order to update or delete a record, you can double click on this row here. Then you can update the details here, then click on update here. Updated details can be seen inside the second tab here. We have updated employee code. In order to delete error code, we can double click on this row. Then click on delete here. It will ask for confirmation. Are you sure to delete this record or not? Click on yes to delete this record. There are a lot of things to learn from this tutorial. We have included all commonly used WinForm controls inside this application. So I hope you will find this tutorial helpful for your upcoming Windows Form applications. What's up YouTube, welcome to .NET Mob. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create an advanced master detail screwed operations, insert, update, delete and select using data grid view in C Sharp Windows Form application. In this video, we will try to add all commonly used Windows Form controls like combo box, then picture upload, data grid view, line editing in a C-sharp data grid view, then radio buttons, etc. So you can find a lot of information from this single video itself. Before starting this video tutorial, I would like to ask you a favor. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video. If you are new here, please be subscribe to this channel .net more. First and foremost, we have to create a C-sharp Windows form application. For that, you can click on this new project here, then select Windows under Visual C Sharp, then select Windows Form application. Select the location where you want to save this application. Then name your application here, I will name it as Master Details Screwed App. Then click on OK. So here we have created a brand new Windows Form application. First of all, I want to change the form title here. For that, right click on this form, then go to properties. I want to change the text here. I will set it as C sharp master details crude app. Now we can add required controls into this form. For that, open your toolbox here, then drag, then drag tab control into the form here. In this application, we are going to implement crude operations on employee details. Okay. First of all, I want to change the tab header here. Currently it is tab page one. I want to change that into employee details. And then I want to change the second tab header. I will set it as employee register. So select the tab, then change the text here. Employee register. We will do the crude operations, insert, update and delete inside this tab and we will list all of the employees that we have inserted into the database in this tab inside a C Sharp Data Grid View. Now we can add required controls into these two tabs here. So I will be back after adding these required controls into this form. That's it, here we have done with designing this Windows form here. Now let's check what are the changes that I have made to get this Windows form. First of all, I have changed the background color of this Windows form to this RGB color. Okay. We named this tab controller as tab control itself. Then I have increased the font size of this tab control. Inside the first tab, that is employee details tab, we have added the controls for crude operations. First of all, we have the label text box pair for employee code. I have named this text box as txt employee code here. Then we have a text box for entering full name of employee. I have named this text box as txt emp name. I use txt as a prefix for text boxes. Then I have abbreviated employee name to emp. 
then we have a combo box to select the position of employee i have named the combo box as cmb position i use cmb as a prefix for combo boxes inside this combo box we will display items like senior developer junior developer accountant so and so then we have a date picker to select date of birth i have named the control as ddp dob i use ddp as a prefix for date picker then we have a gender combo box i have named the control as cmb gender i have populated some static items inside this control male female and other then we have two radio buttons to select type of job whether it is regular or contractual i have named this text box as rbt regular i use rbt as a prefix for radio buttons then we have rbt contractual and here we have a picture box inside that we will show the selected or uploaded employee photo i have named this control as pbx photo i use pbx as a prefix for picture boxes then we have two buttons related to image upload this button is used to select an image for upload i have named this control as btn image browse and then here we have a clear button to reset or clear the image selection I have named this control as BTN image clear and here we have a data grid view I have named the control as DGV EMP company I use DGV as a prefix for data grid view inside this data grid view we will enter details of previous companies of employee so using these controls we will enter master information of employee and using this data grid view I will enter details information about the employee for an employee master details will be a single record and for details section they might have one or more records for a single employee finally we have three buttons inside this panel first one is for save or insert operation and we will use the save button for update operation also i have named this control as btn save then we have a button for delete operation i have named the control as btn delete and this button is used to reset the form controls to their initial stage and inside this second tab here employee register we will list employees that we have inserted into our employee table i have named this data grid view as dgv employee for this main data grid view and this details data grid view i have changed the default cell style here as you can see here default cell style inside that i have changed normal back color and selection back color of data grid view cells okay so here we have done with form design before continuing with this application we have to create the database for this application so let me switch to my management studio here this is my management studio here we are connected to my local server instance inside that we have to create a database so right click on databases then new database I will name this database as master details db click on okay newly created database can be seen here inside that we have to create a table for position and from this position table we will fill items inside this combo box so let's create the table for that right click on tables then new table first column will be position id it's of the type integer then we have final column position it's of the type worker 50 then i want to set this position id column as the primary key for this table now in order to save this table you can use the shortcut control s or you can click on this save icon here i will name this table as position click on ok newly created tables can be seen under this tables node here I want to insert some predefined position items inside the table so right click on it then click on edit top 200 rows I will paste the row here finally inside this position table we have five items accountant software developer sales assistant system administrator and project manager now we have to create two more tables one for master table and one for details table now let's create the master table employee right click on tables then new table inside the master table employee we will have these much columns employee id employee code employee name position id date of birth dob gender state and image path 
Inside this position ID, we will store the corresponding ID of item which is selected from this position combo box. Then inside this gender, we will store male, female or others. Inside this date column, we will store whether it is regular or contractual. And inside this final column image path, we will store the reference of the uploaded employee image. Now I want to set this employee ID as the primary key for this table. I want to set the same column employee ID EMP ID as the identity specification for the table. So select the column, then go to column properties, then expand identity specification and we have to set each identity as yes. So we don't want to insert values inside this column. SQL Server will take care of that. It will start from one and increment it by one upon new record insertion. In order to save this table, we can use the shortcut Control S or you can click on this save icon here. I will name this table as employee. Now click on OK. Now we have to create one more table to store details information of the employee which is previously worked company details. For that, right click on tables here, then new table. Inside details table, we will have these much columns. EMP company ID, which is the primary key for this table. Okay. As a second column, we have the employee ID column. First of all, we will store the master details inside this employee table. Then that corresponding employee ID will be saved inside this details table inside this EMP ID column. Then we have the previous company name, then previous company position, then year of experience. I want to set this ID column as the identity specification for this table. So select the table, then go to column properties, then expand identity specification, set is identity as yes. In order to save this table, you can use the shortcut control S. I want to name this table as employee company. In short, I will name it as EMP company. Click on OK. Finally, we have created three tables. First of all, we have position table, which will be used for populating this combo box, position combo box here. Then we have the master table employee. Inside that, we will store the primary details of employee. And finally, we have the details employee, EMP company. Inside this table, we will store the previously worked companies of the employee. Now we are going to create some required store procedures inside this database so that we can call the procedures from this application in order to implement crude operations. So in order to create a new stored procedure, you can select the database, then click on new query here. Then you can write the SQL query to create the procedure. So first of all, we have the stored procedure to add or update an employee record. I have named this procedure as employee add or edit. With this single procedure, we will do insert and update operation. And here we have the parameters for this procedure. First of all, we have employee ID, employee code, employee name, then position ID, date of birth, gender, state, and image path. With this if section here, we will do the insert operation. For that, first of all, we will check whether this employee ID parameter is zero or not. If it is zero, we will do the insert operation using the normal query insert into then table name, then list of columns. Then here we will pass the values for these columns here. Here we have skipped the first column employee ID since it is the identity specification for this table employee. And finally here we have the line select scope identity. So this will retrieve the last inserted ID back to the caller that is C sharp code. And inside the else part we will do the update operation. Here we have the normal SQL query to update a record with given employee ID. Finally we will return the given employee ID back to the caller. So here we have done with employee add or edit stored procedure. In order to create the stored procedure, you can click on this execute button here. Like this, we need one more stored procedure for insert and update operation of details table, which is EMP company. For that, you can click on this new query button again. And here is the SQL query to do insert and update operation inside EMP company. I have named the store procedure as EMP company add or edit. Using the first parameter EMP CMP ID, we will pass the value for the ID column for this details table 
EMP company. As a second parameter, we have the EMP ID parameter. Using that, we will pass the employee ID. Whenever we insert a new record inside this master table, we will retrieve the newly inserted record ID back to the C-sharp code. And we will pass that newly added record ID to this stored procedure here using this parameter EMP ID. Using this if section, we will check whether this EMP CMP ID value is zero or not. If it is zero, we can do the insert operation. Otherwise, we will do the update operation for the given table ID. Now let's create a stored procedure to retrieve all the employee details from this database. For that, you can click on this new query here. SQL query to create the stored procedure will be something like this. I have named this stored procedure like this, employee v all. We don't have any parameter for the stored procedure. Inside this stored procedure, we have used two tables, employee table, then position table. Inside employee table, we have only position ID. In order to retrieve the corresponding ID position, we have to join employee table and position table. So that is what we have done here. We have retrieved employee ID, employee code, employee name, then position, date of birth and state. In order to create this stored procedure, you can click on this execute button here. Sorry, I forgot to create the stored procedure to do insert and update operation inside the employee details table EMP company. So let's create the stored procedure. So you can click on this execute button here. After this stored procedure employee view all, we need a stored procedure which retrieves all the details of a given employee. Okay, for that you can click on this new query here. SQL query to create the stored procedure will be something like this. I have named this stored procedure as employee view by ID. We have a single parameter which is employee ID. With this master section, we will retrieve the employee details from employee table with given employee ID. With this, we will retrieve the records inside the details table EMP company for given employee ID. In order to create the stored procedure, you can click on this execute button here. Now we want to create a stored procedure to delete an employee record. Here is the SQL query to create the stored procedure. I have named this stored procedure as employee delete. We have a single parameter EMP ID. First of all, we will delete the master record from employee table and then here we have the details section to delete employee details from EMP company table. To create the stored procedure, you can click on this execute button here. Finally, we have one more stored procedure to delete a record from details table, which is EMP company. And here is the SQL query to create the stored procedure. I have named this stored procedure as EMP company delete. We have a single parameter EMP company ID. And here is the SQL query to delete a single record from details table EMP company. To create the stored procedure, you can click on this execute button here. So here we have created required tables and stored procedure inside our database. Now back to the Windows Form application here. As we have discussed, we will be using these controls to end our master details of an employee. And here we have the data grid view. With this, we will deal with previously worked employee companies. And we want to make this data grid view as inline editable. So first of all, we have to add columns inside this data grid view. For that, you can select the data grid view. Then you can see a right arrow here. Click on that. Then edit columns. Now you can add columns. For that, you can click on add button here. First of all, we will add a column for details table ID, which is EMP CMP ID. I will name this DGV txt employee company id for data grid view text box columns i use dgv txt as a prefix and i will change the header text here emp comp id inside this column we will populate the id of details table normally we don't want to show id column inside a data grid view so in order to hide this table i will uncheck this visible checkbox here Click on add. Now we need a column to enter previous company name, DGV TXT company name. Header text will be company name. Make the column visible. Click on add. Now we need a column for position, DGV, and this will be a column of the type data grid view 
combo box so i will use the prefix dgvcmb position and i will set the header text as position click on add and here we have the final column for entering year of experience i will set the name as dgvtxt year i want to make this column type as text box and i will set the header text as year click on add so here we have done with adding data grid view columns now in order to map these data grid view columns with this sql server table column inside the details table emp company we have to set this data property name here as you can see here for employee id we will bind this first column id column emp company so let me copy this company name from here and i will paste it here then we have company name for that we can use this name company name then we have position combo box for that we need this column position id then we have year of experience so let me copy this exp year click on ok as you can see here here we have some free space in order to adjust that you can click on this edit columns here then select company name column i want to set this column type auto size mode as fill so that it will take the remaining space and i want to set some minimum width for this position combo box so i will set this as all cells so that you can see the selected item text inside this column now click on ok for the main data grid view inside the second tab i have changed some properties here i have reset the properties allow user to add rows and allow user to delete rows to false and in order to make this data grid view as read only i have set this property read only to true now i am going to implement reset or clear operation inside this windows form with this reset button so in order to implement this click event you can double click on this reset button to reset form controls i'm going to define a separate function clear first of all we will clear this normal form controls here for that you can do this using this line we will clear the text boxes for employee code and employee name with this line we will select the first item from these text boxes position and gender and inside this date picker we will set the today's date finally we will check this regular radio button here now we need to clear this details data grid view for that we can do this if we have not set any data source for the data grid view then in order to clear the rows from the data grid view you can do this data grid view name dot rows dot clear function will do the job in the else part if there is a data source set to this data grid view you can do this data grid view name dot data source and here we will convert the currently set data source as a data table and finally we will return the cloned data table back to the data source as a result it will clear all the rows from the data grid view except column headers now we have to declare some public variables in order to track the behavior of this application first of all we will need an integer in emp id to store the currently active employee id I will initialize the variable with zero. First of all, we will reset the employee ID back to zero, and we will set and we will set this save button text as save because we will change that text during update operation, and we will disable this delete operation button delete because we will only enable this delete button during update operation. Finally, we have to set this picture box image with default image. First of all, we have to create a folder inside the project debug folder. So right click on this project, then open folder in file explorer, then bin folder inside that you can see the debug folder. Inside that we have to create a folder, new folder, I will name this folder as images. First of all, we have to add the default image into this images folder. So let me copy the default image from my desktop 
and pasting inside this images folder. Now in order to reset this picture box to initial default image, you can do this picture box dot image is equal to image from our images folder. So this property application dot startup path will give the file directory location of our debug folder. Then we have images folder inside that we have the default image related to this image. We have one public variable bool is default image. Initially, I will set it as true. And we have to do the same inside this clear function also. Now we can call this clear function inside this reset click event. And I want to call the same function inside the form load event also. In order to implement form load event of this form, you can double click on this form. Now we can call this clear function here also. Next, we are going to populate position combo box. We have two position combo box. One is inside the data grid view and one is outside the data grid view. We have to populate these controls using this SQL Server table position. Inside that we have five positions. So first of all, I'm going to define a string variable in order to store the connection string for this SQL Server DB, master DB, tails DB. And we have to use this namespace system dot data dot sql client now let's create the function to populate the combo box i will name this function as position combo box fill here we have the using statement inside that we have an object of sql connection with the sql connection string first of all we will open the connection here then we have an sql data adapter sql da inside that we have given the direct sql query select star from position and then we have declared a data table and we will fill the result these rows inside this c -sharp data table and we have to add a top row into this data table that is what we have done here we have added a top row with text select after that we will assign the value member and display member for these two combo boxes we have named the combo boxes as cmb position and dgv cmb position Finally, we will set the data table to this combo box CMB position, which is this one. In order to set the data source for the combo box inside this data grid view, which is this one DGV CMB position, we have made a copy of this data table like this. If we set same data table to these two combo boxes, then if we change an item, selected item from one combo box, the same item will be selected in another combo box also. So in order to avoid the problem, we have made a copy of this data table in order to set the data source of other combo box. Now we can call this function inside the form load event here. Okay. Before this clear function. Now let me run this application. Sorry, here we have misspelled table name. We have to correct the table name here position now let me run this application again so here we have populated this position combo box outside and inside this data grid view now let me check the working of this reset button here I have entered some random data inside this form now click on this reset button here so here we have reset form controls to initial state Next, we will do the functions related to this image browse and image clear buttons. First of all, we will declare an object of this class open file dialog as OFD. Next, we will implement click event for this browse button. So double click on this button. Before implementing this click event, I want to declare one more string variable. Okay. So here I'm going to define a new string variable str previous image. We need this variable in order to store the previously uploaded image name. In order to open a file dialog box to select an image, we can do this. First of all, we will set the filter options as image extensions, JPEG and PNG. Once we select an image, image path of the selected image will be inside this property file name, OFD file name. And we will store that corresponding image inside this picture box image here. Okay, 
After that, we will reset this is default property to false. In order to indicate a change of employee image, we will clear this str previous image variable. Now we can implement click event of this image reset button. Double click on that. Inside the event, we can do this. First of all, we will reset the picture box image to the default image. After that, we will set this boolean is default image to true and then we will clear this str previous image variable. Now let's check how this image selection works. Let me run this application. Click on this browse button here. So here we have the dialog box to select an image. Let me go to my desktop. Here we have some images. I will select this one, click on open. So here we have the selected image inside the picture box. And in order to clear this image selection, you can click on this clear button here. Next, we are going to implement insert operation inside this application. For that, we will make use of this save button click event. Before doing this insert operation, I have to add two functions. Okay, one function for validating this master details form and one function is to save selected image into our images folder. We will discuss these two functions when we discuss insert operation. Inside this save button click event, we will do the insert operation. First of all, we will make sure that this master details form is valid. For that, we can call this function validate master fields inside this if close here. Okay. This function validate master details form will return a boolean value based on the validation result. Inside this validate master details form, we have declared a local variable is valid and it is set as true. Here we have one validation whether employee name is empty or not. If it is empty, we will show the message box employee name is required and we will set this boolean value as false. If you want to add more validations here, you can add that here. And finally, we will return the validation result with this local variable is valid. If form validation is success, we can continue with our insert operation. First of all, I will declare a local variable to show the employee ID. And with this using statement, we will insert master details record into our employee table. Inside this using statement, we have declared an object of SQL connection as SQL con. And here we have opened the connection and we have declared an object of SQL command as SQL CMD. We have used the uh, stored procedure employee add or edit. Here we have set the command type as stored procedure. And with these lines of code, we have set stored procedure parameters value. For employee ID, we have used public variable in EMP ID. For text box controls like employee code, we have done this txt emp code dot text dot trim. Trim function is used to remove white space from both ends left and right. And then we have position ID. For position ID, we have to pass the selected item position ID. For that, we can do this. CMB position dot selected value will give the selected item position ID. And we have to convert that into an integer value. Then we have date of birth DOB. For date of birth, we can pass the selected date from this date picker. For that, we can do this DTP DOB dot value. Then we have gender for gender. We have this combo box here inside that we have inside that we have populated some static items, male, female and others. In order to get this selected item text, we can do this CMB gender dot text. Then we have state for state. We have two radio buttons, regular and contractual. If regular is checked, we will pass the string regular. Otherwise, we will pass the string contractual. Finally, we have to deal with image upload. If it is default image, we can say that user does not select an image for the employee. In that case, we will pass db null to this parameter image path so that we can say that this employee does not have an image. And then here we have an else if part. We will need this else if part during update operation. We can add new employees using controls inside this first tab. And inside this second tab, we will list all of the employees that we have inserted into our employee table. In order to update or delete a record, you have to double click on this data grid view row. And then we will populate the selected employee details inside this form controls in the first tab. During that double click, we will store the selected employee ID inside this public variable 
and we will store the selected employee image reference inside this string variable also. If str previous image is not empty, we can say that there is no change from previous uploaded image. In that case, we can avoid uploading the same image into our debug image folder by passing previous image reference to this parameter image path. Finally, inside this else part, we have to deal with the image upload. In order to save an image, we have declared this function save image. For that function, we have a parameter image path. Using open file dialog object ofd.filename, it will give the selected image full directory path. Inside this function, we have two local variables, file name and extension. Inside this file name, we will store the selected image name without extension. And inside this variable, we will store the extension like PNG and JPEG. And here we have reduced the file name to 15 characters. If selected image name has more than 15 characters, we will skip the characters after first 15 characters using this substring function. We have to make sure that this uploaded image name should be unique because we are going to save all the selected image into our debug image folder. In order to avoid the repetition of file name, we have appended this date time part here with this format yymmssffff. Finally, we have reappended this file extension here. In order to save the image, we can do this pbx photo that is picture box image dot save. So we will save the image that is assigned to this picture box into this path here with new formatted file name application dot startup path will give the debug image file directory and inside that we have the images folder inside that we will store this image with this file name finally from this function we will return the new file name so here we have passed newly uploaded image name to our parameter image path and finally, we will execute this employee add or edit store procedure. Here we have the employee add or edit store procedure. Inside this insert section, you can see that we have returned scope identity. That means newly inserted employee ID record will be returned to our caller. That means C sharp. So we will convert that ID into integer and we will store the value inside this local variable EMP ID. Now we can use this employee ID in order to insert records inside the details tab EMP company. Here also we have an using statement with SQL connection object SQL con. First of all, we will open this connection and we have a loop to iterate through the data git view row here. Okay. Inside each iteration, we will insert new record into our details table EMP company. For each data git view row, dgv row in dgv emp company dot rows. With this if clause, we will check whether the current row is new row or not. Whenever we deal with this data git view row, there will be always a new row at the last position. In order to avoid that last row or new row from this iteration, we have added this if clause here. If it is not a new row, we will insert the data git view details into our employee table. So here is the store procedure for inserting rows inside the details table. Okay. EMP company add or edit. So here we have created an object of SQL command as SQL CMD with the store procedure. Here we have set the command type as store procedure. And with these lines of code, we have passed the values for this store procedure parameters. First of all, we will pass the details table ID emp cmp id we have a hidden column inside this data grid view in order to store the details table id dgvtxt emp company id and in order to retrieve the value from that column we can do this dgv cells then column name dot value will give the value inside the cell if value inside the cell is null we will pass zero otherwise we will pass the value inside this cell and then we have emp id parameter into that parameter we will pass the newly added master details id okay and then we have company name for that we can do this dgv txt company name will be the corresponding column name if it is null we will pass null string otherwise we will pass the exact value inside that for position id we have a combo box 
in order to retrieve the selected item value you can do this cell dot value will give the selected combo box item id if it is null we will pass the zero otherwise we will pass the value in it we have to convert that value into integer this is position id it's of the type integer and finally we have the parameter for year of experience into that we will pass the last column value here finally we will execute this stored procedure with these parameters after this insert operation we will call the clear function in order to clear these form controls and finally we will show the message box submitted successfully now let's check how this insert operation works for that let me run this application i'm going to insert a new record for fiona agree employee code will be fg employee name then position will be software developer then date of birth will be some 90 then female state will be regular then browse for image i will select this image then we have to add two companies here abc then position will be software developer then year of experience to another company bcd position system administrator then year of experience one in order to save this record you can click on the save button here so here we have the success message submitted successfully let me check our database here here we have two tables first one is the master table employee inside that you can see the record for fiona green and master record id will be one now let me check the details table here so here you can see the two rows for two companies and here we have the master details id now let me check our debug image folder whether it saves our selected image or not okay here we have the image for fiona green next we are going to populate this main data grid view inside the second tab with the employee records that we have just inserted into master table employee for that i'm going to define a new function here so here we have the function fill employee data grid view inside that we have an using statement we have declared an object of sql connection as sql con we have opened the connection here and then we have created an object of sql data adapter as sql da with this stored procedure employee view all within this stored procedure employee view all we have retrieved all the records from our master table employee then we have set the command type as stored procedure here we have declared an object of data table dtbl inside that we will fill the result that is retrieved from this stored procedure and we will assign that data table into the main data table dgv employee and we have to set the auto size mode for the columns with index 2 and 3 and finally i made the first column that is the id column which is employee id emp id column as hidden now we can call this function inside the form load event here so here is the form load event I will call the function here and we have to call the same function after insert or update operation so we will call the same function after insert or update operation here now let me run this application now go to second tab employee register inside that you can see the master details of the previously inserted record for fiona green if you want to delete or update this record you have to double click on this data grid view row then we will populate the corresponding employee details inside these form controls here and we will change this button text as update and we will enable this delete button here so let's look how we can do that for that we are going to implement double click event of this data grid view so right click on this data grid view then go to properties then go to events then look for double click event here in order to implement this event double click on this in order to populate the corresponding employee details inside these form controls here we can do this first of all we will make sure that current row index is not minus one 
because the same double click event will be triggered even if you click on the column header. So in order to avoid that, we will add this if close here. Inside that we have declared an object of data git view row. Inside that we will store the current row. And inside this public variable emp id we will store the corresponding employee id. After that we have an using statement. Inside that we have created an object of SQL connection. And we have opened this SQL connection here. Here we have created an object of SQL data adapter as SQL DA with the store procedure employee view by ID. This store procedure can be used to retrieve master and details record of a given employee ID. After that, we have set the command type as store procedure, and here we have passed the employee ID parameter value. Then we have created an object of data set ds and we will store the result from this store procedure inside this data set. Inside this store procedure we have to select statement. So we have to fill data set instead of data table. First table contains master record and second table contains details records. For a given employee there will be only one master record and we will store that master record inside this data row dr. Then using that data row, we will populate these controls inside the first tab. Here we have populated text boxes, employee code and employee name. And here we have set the current item using selected value property of the combo box. Okay. And here we have set the value for date picker. And here we have set the text for gender combo box. Now based on this date column value, we will check corresponding radio button, whether it is regular or contractual. And with this if else block we will deal with image. First of all we will check this column image path. If image column path has db null then we can say that this employee has no image. So we have to set the default image. Inside this else part we will set the corresponding employee image into this picture box and we will store that image name inside this variable str previous image and we will reset this variable is default image to false. After that we will reset this auto generated columns property of the second or details data git view to false in order to avoid extra columns from binding this data git view. After that we will assign second table from this data set into this details data git view here. Then we will enable delete button and we will set the save button text as update tab index 0 we will set the first tab as the active tab. Now let me run this application. Go to second tab. Now double click on this row. We have populated these controls with master and details record. We have updated the button text to update and we have enabled this delete button. We have already implemented update operation in parallel to insert operation. We will be using the same save button click event. We will be using the same save button click event for update operation. Inside this button click event we have used two store procedure employee add or edit and emp company add or edit. We have returned these two store procedures for both operation insert and update. Based on the column based on the table id column value we will decide whether it is insert or update operation. If id column value is 0, we will do the insert operation. Otherwise, we will do the update operation. From C sharp code, we will pass 0 for employee id in case of insert operation. During double click event, we will set this public variable with the corresponding employee id. So whenever we click on this button, we are going to update this employee with given employee id. Same procedure can be applied for details table emp company. We have written this details insert update store procedure emp company add or edit based on the table id emp company id. From this for each loop for details insert or update operation from the hidden column dgvtxt emp company id for existing details record there will be a value inside this hidden column. And for new details record, this column will be null. In that case, we will pass 0. So for existing records, it will do the update operation. And for new rows, it will do the insert operation. Now let's check that in action. I'm going to update this employee code and employee name. 
then i'm going to update the second row from this details data grid view one to two then let me add one more row here e f g then position will be system administrator itself then year of experience will be four now let me save this record okay click on update so here we can see the success message submitted successfully now let me double click on this row so here we have the updated master and details record next we are going to delete this employee as a whole using this delete button before that we have to discuss how we can delete a row from this details data grid view let me close this application i'm going to implement user deleting event for this data grid view so right click on this then go to properties then inside the events you can see an event user deleting row double click on that event in order to delete the corresponding details record we can do this first of all we will store the current data grid view row inside this data grid view row variable dgv row then we will check the value inside the id column dgvtxt emp company id if it is null we can say that then we can say that this selected data grid view row is not inserted into our database in that case we don't have to do anything by default if you select a row from data grid view and then press delete on your keyboard it will delete that corresponding row if there is an id for the selected row it means that row is inserted into details table so we have to delete that from our database also so that is what we are going to do here using this message box we will confirm the operation are you sure to delete this record or not if you sir click yes we will do the delete operation we have to do this confirmation because delete is a loss of data if user does not confirm this operation in order to block the default delete operation we can do this e dot cancel is equal to true we have a using statement with the sql connection object sql con we have opened the connection here then we have declared an object of sql command as sql cmd with the store procedure emp company delete and we have set the command type as store procedure we have a single parameter for the store procedure details table id for that we have passed value from the first id column and we have executed this store procedure using this function execute non query like that we can delete row from this details data grid view row now let's check how we can delete this employee as a whole for that we will use this delete button click event inside that we will do this first so for we will confirm the operation like we have done for the details data grid view row are you sure to delete this record or not if you so confirm this operation we will do the delete operation we have an using statement with the sql connection object sql con we have opened the connection here then we have an object of sql command as sql cmd with the store procedure employee delete using this same store procedure we will delete rows from master table and details table okay in order to execute this store procedure we can call this execute non query function and then we will call the rest of these functions clear then fill employee data grid view finally we will show the notification deleted successfully now in order to check this delete operation let me run this application let me add one more employee for roni abraham code will be ra then employee name will be roni abraham then position will be system administrator then date of birth will be some for 91 or something then mail then employee state will be regular we have to select an image so i will select this image click on open now we have to add one company here abc then position will be system administrator for 3 years now in order to save this employee you can click on this save button here so here we have the success message now double click on this fiona green record now i am going to delete this last details record for that you can select the row using this row header here press delete on your keyboard it will ask for confirmation are you sure to delete this record click on yes to delete the record 
so here we have deleted the record from our dt's records click on update now i am going to delete this employee ronnie abraham as a whole for that you can double click on this row then click on delete here are you sure to delete this record click on yes to delete this row so here we have deleted the employee ronnie abraham it is up to you to add more features into this application like preventing non digit numbers inside this year of experience column then deleting employee photo when we delete an employee as a whole so that's it guys in this tutorial we have discussed how to create master details form in c sharp windows application if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this please be subscribe to this channel dot net mob you can download this project source code from the link given below in video description please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this have a nice day bye